Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Radio Show on Talk Radio 1190. It's more than just mosquito talk. Mosquito Steve will talk about natural products, organics, good business practices, and more. And now, here's your host, Mosquito Steve. Howdy, howdy. This is Mosquito Steve here. Welcome to the Mosquito Steve Show. I want to give a shout out to any of the family that's listening. We have some some relatives all over the country that are listening. Maybe not live, but uh, but they are listening. So we've got a great guest today. Um, uh, his name is Wendell Moore. And, yes, he is, uh, he is kinfolk. That's my dad. So uh, he's 86. I was going to have him on for Father's Day, and uh, we had a conflict, so I couldn't have him then. So, uh, so I'm glad he's here. I also have a co-host today. Samantha Knight from Real News PR is here. Howdy, guys. I'm so Howdy. happy to be here. Thank you, Steve, for having me. Glad you're here. Dad, does your mic work? I don't know, does it? Does. It? <laughs> it surely does. It does. Okay, so um, so let me get through the uh, mosquito news first because um, I've got a lot of people panicking. I tell you, I had uh, was on the radio a lot this week interviewing all over the country, and um, it, I, it just amazes me what happens when you start getting this panic about the Zika virus or West Nile virus and every start buddy all the amateurs come out and everybody has the right answers it's kind of like the people that are telling you oh just put a dryer sheet in your pants or you know put some lemon pledge out on the in a paper plate on the porch and you won't have mosquitoes and so you know none of those things really work and so um so that's why i do my testing what makes me mosquito steve is i stand outside and i count how many mosquitoes land on me um i i do that i've done it hundreds and hundreds of times i've had as many as 900 mosquito bites in one night and i'll tell you after doing some reading um up since i had about 5,000 land on me that night it's very possible that i had more more uh like 3,000 mosquito bites in one night so so i might be lying about that but anyway so on to mosquito news in north texas we have had three uh, five cases of west Nile virus in north texas just this year just this year just recently in fact just in the last month five cases three of those are the neuroinvasive kind so they're the kind that's a those that's really sick those are the people that get really sick often they need to be hospitalized um, so sometimes um, that can lead to death, uh, especially if it's somebody that's elderly or um, or a young infant. And so um, so that's not great news. The numbers of mosquitoes with West Nile are actually down, which is odd. So uh, so it's kind of uh, backwards, but uh, but still, um, it is something that we need to be aware of. Um, And so I want to tell everybody, you need to be wearing mosquito repellent. When you're hanging out outside, it's very important that you wear mosquito repellent. Um, So don't take any chances. Um, Whether you're pregnant or not, uh, male or female, does not matter, kid, old, whatever you are, wear mosquito repellent. It's just a good idea because you might be one of those people that is very susceptible to the West Nile virus. And if you get it, it might make you really sick and maybe put you in the hospital and could possibly even cause death. If you are, in fact, Zika virus, in most cases, Zika virus is a very mild flu, barely affects people unless you're pregnant. And then you might have a child with microencephaly or um, there's actually been a case where a guy died in Utah from the Zika virus. Now, he had other diseases and other problems, but they're saying because of the Zika virus, he died. And so, so it weakened his immune system all around. It, it did. And and here's what's what's going on with that. So there's a lot of people that they don't know that the CDC has not reported yet whether. Uh, so there's another person that got Zika virus that was hanging out with that person that died. So they're saying that this might be a localized case, which means the mosquito bit the person that had the Zika virus and got the Zika virus itself and then passed it on to another person. That's the localized. And that's what everybody's afraid of is that once that starts happening, then um, the disease can spread really fast. Here's the thing. They don't know yet, but, but this is very, very important to remember. Once a Zika uh, mosquito bites somebody with Zika virus, it takes three days to incubate in the mosquito system before they can pass it on. 
So that's one thing that people aren't aware of, that um, if somebody um, has Zika and gets bit by a mosquito, it doesn't immediately start passing it around. It takes three days for it to incubate. So um, that's one of the things that that's why everybody is jumping to conclusions here. We need to slow down. And it's funny, I've been looking at some of the comments and blogs and stuff like that. And I mean, people are just panicking all over the place. And then here's one guy that's telling us that um, that uh, there's a, a, an insecticide they're using in the drinking water down in Brazil that's causing the microencephaly and all this. Well, there is some studies that show that that could be a possibility, but nothing, there is no clear evidence of that yet. So everybody needs to calm down and calm down about Zika. If you're pregnant, you need to be very, very careful and you need to wear repellent. If you're not pregnant, then be very careful and wear repellent anyways. And, uh, and it's what I always say. I know this is, this is um, it's, uh, people don't like to hear this, but if you happen to um, have a friend or somebody or your spouse or loved one is down in places where they have Zika virus and they come back, can you just wait for one week? Wait one week to have sex. That's all you got to do. Put them in quarantine. That's right. That's right. For one week. Surely we can all wait one week to have sex. If you do that, you will not get Zika virus because it only lasts about a week in the system of a human being. So um, I know I go on and on about that, and it's real easy for me to say. That's the thing is people go, well, that's easy for you to say. You're going to wait a week anyways. Your whole life is waiting a week. You wait 52 weeks out of the year, Steve. No, some of us, no, no, we, it's waiting a week to have sex is a big deal. It's a big deal. It is I, a big I'm over deal. here kind of scratching my head on that one. <laughs> well, it, it's been quite a while since I've had to worry about anything like that. So, yes, I am the oldest living, never been married, single heterosexual guy, so. Um, anyway, so don't everybody don't panic. Just everybody take it easy. Wear repellent. And if you're going to wear repellent, I would tell you that you might as well wear the best repellent in the world, and that's Mosquito Steve. And the reason I know that is because I've tested the other products, and I've tested my products. I can tell you right now, it's better than DEET. It's better than Picardin. Now, Picardin is better than DEET. If you can't get Mosquito Steve, wear Picardin because Picardin works pretty well. Um, but um, it is the most effective mosquito repellent in the world. And um, I challenge anybody to um, to come up with a better product and challenge me on it. I'd love I'd love to do some testing. So if you think you've got a better product, let me know. So um, all right. So what else do we have on mosquito news? Um, well, I want to tell you before we go any further. I promised somebody I'd say something about this. So um, um, I'm a big back the blue guy. Um, I love the police. I it's funny because I didn't used to like them. It seemed like they were picking them on me all the time back when I was going to jail a lot. And this was back when I was drinking. And that sounds like a Steve partying. problem, not it a police was, problem. <laughs> it was a, it was a Steve problem. But now I'm a backer of the blue. And so uh, today we have um, uh, the Dallas Fallen Officer Foundation is having a fundraiser at Crash Toys um, from 1 o'clock till 10 o'clock. That's over on 183 um, here in Dallas. And so 50% of swag goes to uh, Dallas Fallen Police Officers Foundation, and 100% of all donations go to the Dallas Fallen, Fallen Officers Association. Um, I'm blown away by what's happened across this country. It's, it's, uh, it's, really, it's really sad to see uh, that people have such a lack of respect for uh, other people's lives. And um, and so I'm I'm a big big black backer of that. So big I didn't say I'm not a big black backer of the blue. That's I, You're a big oh my backer gosh. of the blue. Thank, thank you, thank you. That's hard for you. Okay, say that ten times really really fast. I challenge anybody to do that. So, all right. So uh, lastly on uh, mosquito news. So there is going to be some spraying. So uh, it's important that you guys know this. Uh, the city of Frisco will be spraying for mosquitoes. Uh, today and tomorrow uh, from 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. It's a good idea. So here's what most of these guys are spraying. They're spraying pyrethrins and permethrin. If you read the labels on those products, it will tell you that, that they're harmful to aquatic life, which means they kill fish. Um, and they also um, are harmful. Permethrin is harmful for cats. And so uh, if you got a cat, get your cat indoors. Um, and you want to be indoors uh, from 9 p.m. till 6 a.m. Uh, the city of Dallas uh, will be spraying. Um, oh, they sprayed yesterday until 5 a.m. So 
Um, and then uh, let me see here. Duncanville is going to be spraying tomorrow in the Highgate and Greenstone Court areas from 9 p.m. till 5 a.m. So if you're in those areas, you want to uh, – you probably don't want to get sprayed by this stuff. Um, it's it's pretty yucky. It is not nasty. It never occurred to me to think about bringing in your cats overnight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's – that's so good to know. It's interesting. So in the for, uh, old language on the label of permethrin, it used to say could be harmful to felines. Now it's like it's dressed it up and it's it's hard to see that they're saying this could kill cats because they've made it sound better. Um, so Grand Prairie, um, they sprayed yesterday. Highland Park sprayed yesterday. Um, Rowlett is going to be spraying again tomorrow and Monday. Uh, from 9 to 5 a.m. And then Saxe is going to spray tomorrow and Monday as well. So um, so if you're in those areas, get your cats indoors. Uh, where else? Let me see. Oh, Arlington's going to spray. So uh, from July 25th and the 26th, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And then Burleson is spraying uh, today, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Um, so... There you go. There's our there's our news and our spray schedule. Um, so don't get sprayed, people. I can tell you right now, you don't want this stuff on you. So we're going to take a break here in a minute. Uh, when we come back, uh, we've got we're going to talk to my dad, Wendell Moore. Um, 86 years of experience. We're going to talk a lot about business, um, his business life, and what it was growing uh, like growing up. And then Samantha Knight is here, and she can chime in anytime she wants, and I'm sure she will. She's got oh, uh, lots of opinions. And <laughs> lots of opinions on mosquitoes. All right. So anyway, so you guys uh, listen to these commercials. These are my service providers that can help you out with your mosquito problems. And come on back here in just a minute and to the Mosquito Steve Show. I hate talking over this music, but welcome back to the Mosquito Steve Show. So, um, again, I'm here with Samantha Knight and also with my dad, Wendell Moore, who is, um, well, since you're the father of Mosquito Steve, does that make you Mosquito Wendell or Mosquito Steve Sr.? That, that worries me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I have to ask you, I've always, so what do you think, because <clears throat> I know that we never talked when I was a kid about me growing up and being in the mosquito business. So what do you think about all this mosquito stuff I do these days? Well, my imagination ran wild. <laughs> I, I uh, thought you might possibly be the best politician in, in Texas. <laughs> Why a politician? Well, that seems fit. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe so. Maybe that's in my future. Who knows? So, um, you know, we, we talk here about mental health. We talk about um, uh, addiction problems. We talk about uh, spirituality. You know, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about today, because, um, you know, I learned most of my good business practices from you. And so, um, so. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So they can't hear you roll your eyes when you do that. Just say, so, uh, so yeah. So I learned the good business practices. And so, um, I, you know, I am shocked by the way some people do business today. Um, the, the lack of integrity. Um, you know, people don't take care of customers anymore. Uh, they lie. They fight. You know, it's just, it's not the way it used to be. You know, when I grew up, it was the customer's always right. And, um, uh, and you take care of the customer needs first and you listen, you know, nobody listens anymore. I think that's part of the problem. So, and then you also taught me to be a good salesman. So where did you hone your skills and where'd you learn to sell? First of all, where did you learn to sell? Cause you are, I've got to tell you, he's, he's, uh, you know, one of the greatest salesmen in the world. So he's an Earl Nightingale or a Dale Carnegie type. So, well, thank you, Steve. Uh, that's, uh, Coming from you, I'm uh, I'm uh, surprised because I didn't know you knew all that. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no, I started selling when I was 21, I guess, and uh, I started out selling used cars. Well, I found out that was not a good business for me. Uh, moving oh, oh, on. Oh, you got to watch your hand there. You hit the. That's what you. Yeah, hit you, hit the, you hit the cough button. Oh, okay. That's all right. <laughs> well, I, I was about to call. <laughs> we, we, uh, we were nervous. What happened? What happened? Okay. okay. Well, I uh, got out of the sales business for a while, but it uh, it called me back, and 
Later on, I, I stayed I stayed a salesman of various products, machinery primarily, and uh, uh, got into printing machinery. And that was my final, uh, that, that carried me the rest of my life. I enjoyed that business. I enjoyed the people I met. And uh, I think sales is the greatest profession that you can be in. It is the oldest profession, isn't it? it really yeah, is. The second yeah. oldest. The second, the second oldest. Second, well, no, I think you have to be a good salesman to sell what the first, true. One, that's the first true. one was. So, um, because I, for me, I know I have to be passionate about it. That's what, what I love about, you know, selling my product. And, and it just, as you know, you know, if I have a problem with my product, then I have trouble selling. And so I have to be passionate about my product or I can't sell. And so I think finding what it is that you can sell is a big deal. So, so, um, and I know, so yeah, you were with a chemical company for a while and all that. So, oh yeah, I tried a lot of different things. So you got passionate about printing equipment. Yes, okay. I did. Because you knew that was the best printing equipment or what, what was it? Well, it's, uh, it's a combination of things, but I, it, it was, very satisfying when you make a good a big sale, and uh, so the only kinds of sales I made mostly were big sales. Yeah, and uh, so it and you took trades and you had you had to do a lot of wheeling and dealing, uh, sort of like the car business, only more more uh, perhaps uh, a little bit more honest. Yeah. <laughs> so were you doing cold calls or were you going to conventions? How how were you getting your customers? I worked for. Uh, uh, national companies, international companies, that uh, that ma- manufacture uh, printing equipment, and uh, so the the only time I ever actually saw the headquarters is when we had a convention, or uh, was called up for special training, or later on as I as I got older and and more experienced, I co- was called up to do training, uh, to to be the trainer. And uh, so I used to I traded uh, uh, being a salesman for being a trainer for a while, and then came back to Dallas because I liked I liked the the Dallas area, and uh, it it's been very good to me this this whole business. And uh, later on, uh, as I got older, I bought out one of the companies that I had sold printing equipment to, and <clears throat> became a printer, and uh, that. Uh, that carried me uh, right on to my retirement. So he was, uh, did Samantha, I'm telling Samantha, so the, he was a top salesman in the country for A.B. Dick Printing Equipment, which was the one of the largest manufacturers of small printing equipment uh, for 17 years, was it? Uh, approximately, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, that's huge. The national leader in sales for that long. So as I was growing up, they would go on these trips. They'd get these free trips and things like that because he'd win these sales contests. So, you know, they were always going off to Vegas or, you know, Puerto Vallarta or somewhere like that. But Oh, without you? Uh, yeah. Oh, of course, without <laughs> me. Well, there's more to that story than I, I got to where I actually enjoyed it when they left town the older I got. And, you know, I'd have have friends over, a few well, that's friends. That's where you started getting in trouble with the that police. Was, uh-huh. Aha. Yes. Yeah, Aha. Uh-huh. So, uh, but one of the things I know that was a key to your being uh, the tops in sales was that you knew how to service equipment. So instead of just selling, so if somebody called on a Friday afternoon, they've got a big client they got to get a product out for, they're trying to run the press and something breaks, then they call you and you could actually go over there and fix it for them or you had somebody that could. Yes, I would either get him a service man, or I would, uh, I would personally go over there. Uh, it, there was one one time in particular, the, the man called about four o'clock in the morning, and uh, of course I was sound asleep, and uh, <clears throat> I uh, I discussed his problem and and told him how to solve it, uh, and uh, went back to sleep, and I didn't even remember the call. So. <laughs> <laughs> That is so funny because, you know, back this is back in the day. Some of you probably don't even know this. So it used to be that your phone would ring at home and you would actually answer it and it would ring. You wouldn't, couldn't, you didn't turn it off. It actually rang. I know so, what phones are. So, but, but I don't know how old you think I am. I know what phones do. <laughs> well, but, but I mean, <laughs> but like a home landline, everybody had them. And if somebody called you at 10 o'clock at night or four in the morning, you didn't know who it was. You had no idea who it was when you're answering the phone because we didn't have caller ID. Now we can look and 
and see because i know at their house now they're constantly getting sales calls and so half the time they don't even answer them because they're sales calls but um but yeah it, this was back in the day when we used to answer the phone had no idea who's going to be on the other end of it so that was incredible so well, you know, I did learn from you. So, you know, when I went into the misting business, the mosquito misting business, I actually would, I was able to service my own equipment. And there were times, you know, when I first started in this, I was working seven days a week. Because if a machine is going to break down, if a system's going to break down, it's going to break down at five o'clock on Friday or on Saturday or Sunday. And so, um, so oftentimes I had to, you know, run out the door and go help people. So, um Okay, I want to talk a little bit about um, because of, of your sales. You know, a lot of times I've found out that it's my background that makes me a good salesman and things. Obviously, you know, my dad's influence. So who influenced you? Who was it that, that – who was your mentor? Who was the – I know your brother was a great salesman of used cars too. So, Well, he was limited to that. But I, I uh, uh, had uh, – uh, when I first came to Dallas, I bought a gas station. Yep. Uh, it was terrible. And it, uh, <laughs> I, I lost money every day, but I made it up in volume, they used to say. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, a uh, one of my customers uh, was named Bill Mustaine, and he was a sales manager for the credit bureau, Merchants Retail Credit, it was called then. And uh, uh, Bill and I became good good friends, and uh, he wound up uh, offering me a job, and that was my my first real sales job. Wow! And uh, <clears throat> he did he did a lot of training and holding my hand, but uh, I was in sales from there on, and uh, uh, that was uh, that was a fun time in my life. In fact, from then on, it was fun times. Uh, Bill is uh, he's no longer with us, but he he was. Uh, he moved on to Houston and Galveston and was manager of the, the credit bureau in Galveston for a long years ago. Yes. Yeah, and actually, so his son became one of my best friends growing up too, Danny. And uh, yeah, we spent a lot of time with them. And I'll never forget those trips down to the the to Galveston and Mustang. Or what is it? Mustang Island is that Mustang Island? Mustang Island. Yeah, yeah. And boy, and boy, you talk about. I mean, because Danny, you know, Danny could drank some beers when we were young very young and so did i and uh i think that was the first time i ever drank and drove was on the beach and uh must on mustang island back way back way back <laughs> but uh that was fun there was uh i remember we were down there uh there was a hurricane approaching or something it was just there was a lot lots of good memories from from back then um so um I want to ask you before cause we're fixing to take a break. Um, so, by the way, so if you want to call in 214 or 817-787-1190, we'll take some calls if you got any questions for the second half of the show. So uh, we're going to go on a break here in a minute. And so if you want to call in, uh, you can ask my dad questions if you want, or you can call in and ask mosquito questions. Or maybe you have a question for Samantha about tennis or white flies or public relations or cats you want to ask me about cats or cats there you go so 214 or set or 817-787-1190 and uh, we uh, will be right back with uh, the mosquito steve show the mosquito steve radio show is back here's your host mosquito steve that's me mosquito steve here welcome back to the mosquito steve show uh, before I get back on with my guest, my dad, Wendell Moore, I want to, um, uh, let me see, let's do the what's bugging you from my Facebook page this week. So um, here we go. I got totally bugged by rush hour traffic. This is why I can't work in the mornings. I'm a wreck by the time I get to the gym. That's so, for me. I know. I can't <laughs> believe that. Let's, uh, but you did say, um, I don't, uh, so also bugged by the tiny red bugs that jump on me at the courts. I don't think they bite, but they sure make me itch. What the heck are those? So those are chiggers. And yes, Texas is known for our chiggers and, uh, they do bite. And well, yes, like they do. I'm like a chigger magnet, but these little red ones, they don't seem to be biting me like regular chiggers do. Well, what I would recommend, we have a yard spray product mm -hmm. that actually gets rid of chiggers and fleas. And so I would highly recommend using that. But I know you can't use that. You actually could. I could. I could you bring can, it with me um, to public court. Let's talk. Because I have a device you could use, and you could go out there and spray down the court before you play. There oh my, you go. Are you like willing to work? Idea. you got to work for it, though. 
Um, and then uh, Sarah Dougherty, what's bugging me is that I can't play Pokemon Go without being eaten alive by bugs. I went out to Bedford Boys Ranch and got at least 15 bites on each leg, and my friends got attacked by bugs too. Is there anything I can do to make bites go away faster? So what I do is I put hot water on the bites, and then that opens the pores and lets some of the poison out, and then I put cortisone after. So put hot water on and then follow it up with cortisone, and that works real well. Um, I want to get into the talk about cop killings right now because that's way too difficult a topic to talk about at this point. But uh, the, 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 here's something to tell you. People are not picking up after their pets. Sarah said, people are not picking up after their pets. Take the time, people. I hate stepping on that stuff. Well, I do too. I really appreciate that. Um, and I do have, here's a tip from Ginger. Um, now, I don't, I've not tested this, but she says for mosquito bites, she wets a piece of ivory soap and then rubs it on the bite, and the itching and soreness and swelling go away immediately. So you might try that little tip. Uh, that's not a Mosquito Steve tip. That is a ginger tip, but I wanted to share that with you. And ginger sounds like one of those people that just knows things, though. You can well, ask her. okay. You can yeah, ask Yeah, but, you know, something. next thing you know, she's going to be sending in a note and saying, a dryer sheet in your pants will get rid of mosquitoes. That's the problem is that it just gives you fresh people smelling become pants. experts really, really fast. But, but no, that's <laughs> great. So, again, so we're here with my dad, Wendell Moore, Wendell. Um, and um, so I want to talk to you a little bit. I want to know what it was like growing up in the Depression era. So uh, you were um, you were just a little boy, I know. But what was it like growing up in the Depression era? I mean, did you guys, did you go hungry? Did y'all have to wait in food lines? Um, you know, what was it like back then? Well, I was born in 1930, and uh, the uh, <clears throat> we lived on a farm out uh, in West Texas, which is a bad place to have a farm to start with. <laughs> uh, my dad lost his farm back mm. in, uh, in about the time I was born, and we lived in, in tenant houses, which were basically shacks. And uh, it was uh, it was a tough time for my folks. Uh, I didn't know any better, so I thought it was fine. Uh, it was a uh, we moved to Colorado City, the big city of Colorado City. Uh, we moved there in uh, about 1936, and uh, <clears throat> I, I was absolutely amazed. It actually had stores. It had two story buildings. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't believe that I had uh, had made that big a jump. Uh, and from there in 1940, 41, my family moved to San Francisco. And, uh, and they got a, a, a great shock for me. I had no idea that this was such a huge, that people could live in this kind of a huge environment. Uh, grew up in the old Mission, Mission District in San Francisco, and that's where I went to school. and. I, uh, it was just, uh, had a lot of fun. Got in, oh, got in the street gangs right away. Yeah. So I was pretty well uh, able to keep myself from getting beat up too bad. But uh, So I come <laughs> from it honestly, see. <laughs> you told me to be that, honest. That's right, that's right, that's right. <clears throat> All right. Well, hold on. So we got, we got a call? We Is did, it? but she didn't want to come on the air. But Amy from Dallas wants to know what flowering plants will uh, repel mosquitoes but attract bees? Um, wow, that's a really, really good question. I, you know what? I'll tell you what. Um, Amy, if you don't mind, if you'll send me that in an email, I'll find out from Ron, from Ron's Organics, or one of my organic people. Um, also, um, uh, what's, I'm losing her. Andrea Rideout from uh, Gecko Hardware. And I'm sure that they would be willing to, to give you that answer. But here's what I can tell you. You have to plant a whole bunch of them. I mean, tons and tons of them if you want to keep the mosquitoes away. There's nothing that you're going to plant just a little row of that's going to keep the mosquitoes out. So it takes a whole bunch of them. And most people don't want to plant as much as what you need. I know lemongrass is one. That's uh, that's highly recommended. That. So Do you know um, what attracts bees, though? Because rosemary. I'll tell you, I live in an apartment. I live on the third floor. And I tried to have a patio garden, and I couldn't get any bees up there to pollinate, and all of my plants just kind of died. How do well, I get bees? So um, I have um, some. I have clients that have things like daisies out there, and and we we often see the bees uh, fly around for them. But 
You know, that's a really good question for somebody that does a lot of gardening. Dad, what would you suggest? Because you know more oh, about flowers. That's a good segue. You know more about flowers than I do. He's actually, he loves, you know, working out in his garden. Well, I did. <laughs> but uh, actually, uh, I recommend plant- planting them in the ground. That way it could be pretty safe. <laughs> I don't there have any ground. <laughs> I'm on the third floor. Um. I don't know that you're gonna get bees up on the third floor. You know that's so. Here in a couple of weeks, by the way, I do have a beekeeper uh, that's gonna be on the show. So that's where we'll find out. So once you plan on coming in, I'll let you know the exact date, and you plan on being here for that. Keep that in mind and um, ask. So yeah. So here's what I will tell you: we do have customers that have that we spray and treat, and yet they have um, um, they have bees that are flying around their yard after we've gotten through treating. So what's great is is our stuff is a repellent, so we're not killing everything. And so, um, okay, Dad, so how old were you when you got your first job? I have to know this because I, I think you had me working at like 10. It was, it was, I wasn't an indentured servant or anything, but uh, pretty my, young. My first, uh, my first job was when I was about six years old, but my first uh, wage-paying job was I had to – I couldn't wait till I could get my Social Security at at twelve, <laughs> and uh, so I, if I had with a Social Security card, I could again go to work at various places, and uh, so that was my my first real job was was at twelve, and uh, I I uh, wound up uh, working for some of the greatest people that taught every one of them taught me something, oh. and uh, I uh, and of course. I tried to be the hardest worker that they had, and uh, it, it paid off in, in loyalty from my, the, my employers. Uh, <clears throat> then my uh, uh, my first job after I, well, I went to the Air Force, so that was my next thing, about se- at 18, 17, and uh, <clears throat> deployed over to, the, to uh, Guam in the South Pacific, and uh, was there for about a year and a half, and uh, then moved back to, uh, I was transferred back to Washington State. It was talk about extremes, from 85 degrees year-round to uh, 20 degrees year-round, mostly in, in Washington. Wow. So it was, a, it was a, quite, a, quite a shell shock. But uh, I was discharged from service up there and uh, hitchhiked back to Texas, and stayed here ever since. I was, I wouldn't go anywhere else. Wow, I would not recommend hitchhiking these days. It's no, a little not, different. Not today. <laughs> I probably wouldn't. But back then, uh, that was that's the way I got around. <laughs> wow. So what did you do? What what jobs? What kind of jobs were you doing? Were you doing these manual labor jobs you were doing before you got in the Air Force when you were just? Uh, well, I had a. I, I was my first sales job was. With a with a man named John Portman, and uh, he made uh, uh, compounds, uh, sweeping compounds for floors and janitorial products. And so he and I would I, I went to uh, took uh, chemistry in high school and college, and uh, we would go back and develop a, a product and uh, together and. Uh, and then we would manufacture it, and then we'd both go out and sell it. He, he was wow. a one-man show until I went there. Boy, I can relate to that. That's where I got all that. So yeah. I was wondering, because everybody asked me if I'm a chemist. I'm, no, no, I'm not. I'm just the test guy. So <laughs> I'm bait. That's what the I do. The pin cushion. That's right. I'm the pin cushion. So, <laughs> um, okay, so you were after World War II. Was, I mean, gosh, you grew up in World War II, the Korean War, and then— um, but what what was going on when you were stationed in Guam? Was there? Uh, this was uh, that's when the uh, the uh, Korean War started, and uh, <clears throat> again I was uh, in the Air Force, and uh, we didn't get directly involved in that, and uh, uh, my my unit didn't, and uh, so I avoided the the worst of the war, uh, not deliberately, but just by circumstances, uh, and uh, the. Uh, the Korean War started in 1950, and I got out in 1950. I was discharged, and came back to Dallas. Uh, it was a, again, my my permanent job place here was in Dallas. Uh, right after I I came back, I joined the reserves out at uh, 
Hensley Field in Grand Prairie, and that unit was called up. And I thought, sure, that I was, I was well, I, I packed my duffel bag and my, put on my uniform and went out to the air base in, in Grand Prairie. And the, the colonel called me in and said, I'm sorry, Sergeant, but you're not going to be able to go. We just, <laughs> we, we just can't make room for you. <laughs> so, oh, my God. Must have uh, broke your heart. <laughs> yeah, broke, yeah. Uh, so... I said, well, I, I'm I'm sorry to hear that, but I guess I'll have to pick up and go. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. So uh, we got another break coming up. I do. I want to talk because I know you are um, you are a mechanic in the Air Force, right? Uh, no, I was a I was a desk mechanic. A desk mechanic. Okay. <laughs> okay, because because you you can work on things. You worked on cars. You worked on the printing equipment. I did not get that love for mechanics and working on things. I, that was not me. In fact, I I was really good at avoiding that, as you may remember when I was growing up. And um, he always wanted to work on the weekends and stuff like that. And I wanted to be out playing and and being lazy and partying and stuff like that. So um, it's a wonder that I turned out at all. Um, like I did. Um, but anyways, it was good. I, and I, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about when we come back about, because about the way that you raised us, um, uh, you, you, uh, raised me and my sisters on, uh, you know, going to church and stuff like that and taught us good morals. And, and so I want to come back and talk about that and also about, you know, which one is your favorite kid. So, uh, so anyways, <laughs> we'll be right back with the Mosquito Steve show. So stay tuned. The Mosquito Steve Radio Show is back. Here's your host, Mosquito Steve. You know, um, I got criticized for picking songs like that one from Loggins and Messina that are so slow. But uh, you know what? This is uh, I loved the ballads when I was growing up. And it's funny that because speaking of that, um, you know, when I was little, uh, my dad and I joined a barbershop chorus. And uh, and we sang together, and uh, that was some. It was a lot of fun. It was a uh, whole lot of fun for. Uh, did that for many years, and I got in a quartet. And we actually sang. Uh, we sang on TV a couple of times. We were very young when we were first started singing this quartet. Are we starting a band right now? We could. Why? What do you play? Nothing really. Do you sing? Eh. Okay. Well, we might. But well, but th- I think we just started a group, the three of us. There you go. <laughs> well, I'll sing harmony. I can tell you, I'm good at harmony, so I've got a good ear. Um, uh, so, where did you where did you start singing? Because I, I remember we joined that, and I mean, you were um, you were a great singer back then. I'll tell you, I'm a better singer now. <laughs> but uh, where did you start singing? Because when I grew up, we sat around and picked guitars and all sang together. Well, that's how I that's that's how I uh, started singing. This is the thing that people used to do. When you lived on the farm, you didn't have any kind of uh, uh, entertainment. So what you did is you got together with the uh, families down there, the cousins and the uncles and the aunts, and, and we would go to each other's house, and, uh, and we'd sing and play. And uh, my brother uh, played the guitar, and uh, so it, he was always welcome wherever he went. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he was. Uh, uh, we were uh, just just had our fun with, as a family and as a, as the uh, local people there, uh, and that just carried on when we moved into the big city. Uh, that that just we just uh, got a different group of people that we would sing and play with, and just that was the way it started. Well, it was. So those are some of my favorite memories of uh, getting. The, of uh, us getting together and playing guitar and singing and we do that on the holidays and uh and and there were so many of the the family members can play instruments we had keyboard players we had you know but but i'll, I'll never forget over at red's uncle red and uh he was uh, dad's older brother and and uh, he played this old beautiful gibson guitar that hollow body electric guitar and We'd sit around and sing, and um, and so that's uh, that made me a singer. So so we have a call. Is this a call for a question for me or for Dad or who's this? What is it? It's Sarah Crilly. So I figured oh. she just wanted to join in with you. Hi, well, hello, Sarah. Sarah. Hello. hello, hello. There she is. 
Hey, Mosquito Steve. Hi, Sarah. So Sarah works with her dad, and so uh, so I've worked with my dad before. And so what's it like working for your dad, Sarah? It is so cool. So I grew up thinking that everyone's dad was on TV back when my, my dad was a TV reporter in kindergarten. And um, <laughs> so that was pretty cool to be able to know that something was really special, that my dad did something different. And also, I watched him leave TV news to start uh, Real News PR and have watched my dad literally put blood, sweat, and tears in this company. And I always say that I want to be my dad when I grow up. He's just the biggest role model I have in my life and just love that. Is that how you felt growing up with your dad, working with your dad? Well, you know, we actually, we it's been, when I was a kid, yes, when we spent a lot of time together, we built a canoe together. We refinished this old roll top desk, which is my desk that I use today, uh, my work desk. And so, um, you know, I spent uh, most of my time as a kid, you know, trying to, trying to be like dad. I made straight A's in elementary school. I never missed a day of school. I, I, uh, you know, it was, um, you know, but I, I got um, I got sidetracked pretty early. I mean, it was the seventh grade when I started going, you know, different direction and your priorities change, you know, and stuff like that. But I'll tell you, one of the things that um, I mean, we were brought up in church and and uh, dad was a disciplinarian. So we that was all good stuff. They don't do that anymore. I wish they would because you can see it in kids. Uh, kids are, are wacky these days. But um uh, you know, the reason that I came back and I think that I got my life back on track was because of the foundation that I had, you know, in being disciplined and in going to church. And so um, so I know that you I know your family is probably the same way. You weren't yeah, Presbyterian yeah, exactly. growing up, my, Dad. Were you? My work ethic. It sounds like you got your work ethic from your dad, too. And that's how I can relate is just. Gosh, no matter what challenge or obstacle, dad is going to figure it out. And I was able to see, you know, those hard times and, you know, really grow from that. And <laughs> those are some big shoes for me to try to fill. But I just, gosh, I can't tell you how much. And he's in Houston right now. So I, I miss him. So it's fun to talk about him. Oh, well, cool. Don't cry. Don't cry. Are you with Caleb? <laughs> Hey, so I wanted to tell, and thank you so much. So, you know, that Pokemon Go uh, game that all these kids are crazy about. Well, my son, Kayla's been out at different parks, and we've been going catching them all, right? <laughs> and the first thing he said is, we need to put on our Mosquito Steve. We don't want to get mosquito <laughs> bites while we're playing <laughs> the Pokemon Go game. And um, so, yeah, we've been – and I've seen so many people that are out and playing that game but want to spread the awareness that, gosh, while you're out there, there's definitely bugs and things in the elements of people that kind of will play that game and they're not used to being outside. <laughs> and that you're you're – Ray is amazing. But don't walk in traffic. That Pokemon no, Go, this no, is, no, I mean, that's no, the thing. You know, this, safe. Dad was just talking about, you know, the, the distractions these days. You know, they didn't have that stuff back then. They've got this game now. It's called Pokemon Go, and you look at your phone all the time, and you walk around looking at your phone, and people have actually walked into lakes and, and you know, cars off cliffs. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. Two now. guys fell off cliffs. Two guys fell off cliffs. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what we needed was something to make you pay more attention to your phone and less attention to people. But they're so, outside and active, so you got to give them credit for that. So, um, so let me ask. This is a question for my dad. So, um, you were not, you couldn't have been raised Presbyterian, right? You were Baptist, right? I raised Baptist. Yes, my mother was a hard shell Baptist. We uh, we were brought up on. Uh, preaching hard and fast and loud. <laughs> you know, it's funny because Dad was actually the one to teach first one to teach me how to use computers. Really? And so yeah, he doesn't do computer stuff now, but he was the first one to teach me computers. We had computers when we worked together, and um, I'd never seen anything like it. And he'd be in there typing away on his proposals, and I had no idea what how to use a computer at the time. Were you trying to use a typewriter? Um, gosh, I don't know. I guess so. I liked handwriting stuff. Etching things into have, the back I of a stone. I like having other people type for me. <laughs> so, well, Sarah, I appreciate you calling in. Caleb, how you doing? Caleb's doing great. And you know what? He's so goofy right now. But we're going to send you a video, Mosquito Steve, of Caleb using your spray because you have prevented so many horrible mosquito bites. And a little bit about Caleb is that he gets horrible reactions to mosquito bites. It's not just the normal little bite. So thank you, Mosquito Steve. We love you so well, <laughs> much and have made such a difference in our family. Well, thank you, Sarah. And thank you, Caleb. Appreciate you guys <laughs> calling in. Y'all have a we good trip. You.
Thank you. All righty. Um, so, uh, so you know, you dad doesn't get mosquito bites. Lucky. He yes. Yeah. <laughs> Like he goes well, out. Occasionally, his, I do. Well, Dee Dee does. So his wife Dee Dee, she gets the mosquito bites, and so um, it's probably just that they prefer her over him. And so, um, so, but anyways, yeah, he doesn't get them. So, um, so he he doesn't worry about this stuff. It's never been a problem for him. So I take I go over there and I spray their house every once in a while and get repellent over there for her. But um, so Dee Dee, he wouldn't be who he is today without Dee Dee. They've been married sixteen years. And um, they have one son named Jake, uh, who is a little furry son. Um, oh. And uh, he's like my brother. And uh, he pretty much runs the house. Yes. Hello, Jake. I want to say hello to you. <laughs> I'm sure he's listening. <laughs> and I bet he is. Well, and Dee Dee, too, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Dee Dee. <laughs> we don't want to forget about her. And Drew. I think Drew's listening in, too. Oh, Drew, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and I think um, you've got relatives, um, I think, that are going to be listening to this, Sharon and Rhonda and Andrea and uh, Kirby. Oh, and, all my uh, West Texas relatives. All right. your West Texas relatives are going to be listening. And Shanna. Uh, now i got to name everybody because oh. I started naming some. we got uh, wait Rhonda, Shanna, Andrea, uh, Kirby, and uh, Sharon. And who else? Who am I forgetting? <laughs> uh, I don't remember who else. Oh, my sister Michelle. Oh, by the way, so who, which one's your favorite kid? Who's your favorite kid? Well, I, I don't know. I it's so hard to choose because they're just both Steve. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> There's only two. Who's your favorite cousin? Now, that's a better question. Well, let's see. My cousin? Uh, Tony? <laughs> no. Oh. Don't you go starting family feuds. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's right. Tony's no longer with us. Tony was another great musician. In fact, Tony actually is the one of one the family he had a recording I think I was the only other one that had a recording when I was in a barbershop quartet. But Tony had uh, Little Rome. Was that Little, Little Rome was his big hit. Little Rome. So, uh, yeah, Tony from Big Spring. So we still got lots of relatives out there. Well, Dad, this was great. I actually have a, a whole bunch more questions to ask you, uh, but we'll have to keep them. Uh, we'll have to save them for the next time. So we've got just one minute left. We're wrapping up, and we got the news coming up. So, so we're gonna have to say goodbye for now. But I appreciate you coming on. I really do. Uh, we'll go hang out some more and hang out with Jake here in a little bit, and and Dee Dee. And you can eat some butter cake with pecans on it. Okay. So <laughs> can I come over too? Yeah, I got some cake. <laughs> so Samantha, I'll let you know about the beekeeper. You got to come sure. back. Thank and you for so, having me on. I yeah. had a blast. Um, hi to my family in Denton, Illinois, and New York who are listening right now. Awesome. Well, I I love having a co-host. I really do. It's a lot of fun to I'll have somebody anytime. bounce off because I get kind of opinionated and I've got my you know I'm one sided. So hey, uh, listen, you guys, back the blue, back the blue. Go out to uh, Crash Toys today. And, uh, you know, anytime you get a chance back the blue, we love our cops and um, I love our cops anyway. So uh, appreciate y'all listening to the Mosquito Steve show. You have a great weekend and a great week coming up. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to the Mosquito Steve show. Join us every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Talk Radio 1190 or find us on the iHeartRadio app.